Nice. At this time, I'd like to call to order the October 24th, 2022 Palm Springs Park and Recreation Commission meeting. I'd like to start with the roll call. Okay, commissioners, when I call your name, please indicate if you're present. Chair Alcorn? Present. Vice Chair Cola Donato? Present. Commissioner Crawford? Present. Commissioner Diaz? Present. Commissioner Finland will be joining us late. Commissioner Meyer is excused. Commissioner Moralia? Present. And Commissioner Spellman? Um, I believe might be joining us late or he'll be excused then for this meeting. So we have uh, a quorum. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. With that being said, has everybody had a chance to look over our minutes from the previous meeting? Oh, one, uh, Chair Alcorn, can I just quickly uh, report on the posting of the agenda? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we posted the agenda last Wednesday, which was uh, October 19th, in accordance with our uh, public posting uh, meeting requirements. Thank you, ma'am. So with the posting of agenda, does anybody have any uh, uh, modifications or any objections to our minutes? If not, can I get a motion to approve in a second, please? Motion to approve. Thank you, John. We've got a first with John. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Jody. Second by Jody. And I'll do a roll call vote on that. Chair Alcorn? Yes. Vice Chair Cola Donato? Uh, I'm gonna abstain since I wasn't, I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Commissioner Crawford? Yes. Commissioner Diaz? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Moralia? Yes. Check if we have Commissioner Spellman. Oh, we have. I just want to get, um, did we get Commissioner Finland into the meeting? I don't see him. Let's see if he's in the waiting room. You know what? He must have just dropped. I saw him for a second unless I accidentally dropped him. Okay, well, we will watch for him. Uh, Commissioner Finland should be joining us again shortly, I believe. Awesome. So at this time, we're gonna move forward with public comment. Now, before we have public comment, I just wanted all the commissioners and the public to know that the city made an announcement today. And they let everybody know that they are not gonna overseed and we are not gonna reseed the city hall dog park this year. We are gonna go ahead and try to look forward to other ground coverings, other ways of having it sustainable. So it's open 24, you know, so it's open year round. And uh, the city made the decision today and it was announced. So I just want everybody to be aware that the uh, David Reddy Dog Park is not gonna be overseed and will not close at all this season, unless there's some kind of unscheduled maintenance we have to do. So with that being said, Let's move forward to public comments. Just to let all the public speakers know, we have a three minute per speaker. We will let you know what time to start and when to finish. And with that, we'd like to go ahead and start. Okay, so please, um, if you are an attendee for the meeting and you would like to speak now during public comment, please use the raise hand feature. 
and we will let you into the meeting one by one. It looks like first we have um, Mr. Uh, Mike Altop. And just one second, Mike, while we let you into the meeting. Okay, Mr. Altop, can you hear us? Uh, and you are on mute right now, so we can't hear you. Still on mute, sir. Yes, I'm sorry. No problem. There we go. Welcome to, <laughs> to the uh, Parks and Recs Commission. We will give you three minutes. You are more than welcome to start now, sir. Thank you very much for the time to speak. Um, I've been a resident of Palm Springs for uh, two years now. I take my dogs to the dog park every morning, and that's a great way to uh, get the dogs some exercise and uh, interact with people. Um, my first question, I have three. The first question is, what are the plans to improve the Duluth Dog Park? And I don't need like an overall, you know, a big plan, just in general. Okay. We have some funding available and we're working on it this upcoming season to redo the whole park, sir. Okay. What is that budget amount? It is in this year's budget. I got to recheck before I, I don't want to misquote, but once I find out, I will send you an email uh, this upcoming week. If that's okay, sir. Yeah. I mean, do you have a, a rough guess? I'm not looking to hold you to anything specific, just kind of curious of a general range. The um, the interim enhancements are two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for interim enhancements. Okay. And when do you expect those improvements to take place? We have a commission for the dog parks, and we are working as we speak to get all those all the information together and get rolling on that as well, too, sir. Okay. And then I, I understand from your comments earlier that you're, you're uh, uh, not going to do the reseeding project at the Demuth, or I'm sorry, at the Palm Springs Park, and it's going to remain over. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. No problem. Yes, we are going to keep that open for the community. We have heard from what everybody has said, and we will keep it open. And we are working for alternative methods to find new ground covering for this upcoming season as well. So this does not continue happening. Yeah, that that would be ideal. The uh, the grass is lovely, but I'm, I'm sure the maintenance and the cost for water and reseeding is exorbitant. So, you know, some kind of an alternative sustainable ground cover would be very much appreciated. We are then, working. Um, on... Go ahead. And then just a, a time is up, then, Mr. Alto. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, and it looks like we have a, another speaker, uh, Edwin Ramoran. Just on one second, and we will get you in the meeting. Hi, good evening. Hello, hello. Is this Hi, Edwin? I can hear you. Welcome to the Palm Springs Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. We'll start your time now, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Parks and Recreation Commission Chair Alcorn, Vice Chair Coladonado, and Commissioners Crawford, Diaz, Finland, Mayor. Moralia and Spellman. My name is Edwin Ramoran, and I currently serve on our city's Human Rights Commission and the Equity and Social Justice Committee. I'm here to make public comments as a community organizer and resident of District 1 and a spokesperson for two community-based projects planned for Veterans Tract in what is called the Demuth Park neighborhood. The general request is for you to add these projects to the agenda next month for consideration and updates. Firstly, 
On behalf of Bai Nihon Desert, we are excited to be celebrating October every year as Filipino American History Month. We are grateful for the city supporting our Philippine, Philippine X American Community Mural with Palm Springs artist Adam Lebuen Garcia since its inception. And we are at an exciting stage following a series of intergenerational community engagements and dialogues. And we'll present our progress report, including visuals of the proposed mural for the Demuth Community Center. I was born and raised in Palm Springs, and this project remains a wonderful way to build a bridge to the overlooked Filipino enclave legacy and multi-generational families in the immediate neighborhood and the overall cultural history of the Coachella Valley. Secondly, I am excited also to have the honor of introducing the plans to premiere a new art festival and art in the park in the dark in conjunction with the Global World Art Day Festival on April 15th, 2023, already being planned by the city at the Demuth Community Center, led by my neighbor, comedian, realtor, and com community activist, Shan Carr. Demuth Park will participate in this international event with nighttime gallery of, its, of arts programming on the eastern end of the park, on and around the stage and tennis and pickleball courts and the tables and benches. Last week, we had an inspiring and productive meeting with the city's special events coordinator, Jasmine Waits, recreation assistant, Crystalline Paquette, and former public arts commissioner, Charlie Ciali, who is currently Palm Springs Unified School District Arts Office Artist in Residence. We spoke about the many ways artists can participate in the programming and exhibitions at the park for the day at the community center and the nighttime gallery where an artist will be exploring innovative and engaging strategies to integrate darkness and light to activate the park. This will be a grand opportunity to celebrate the cultural diversity of Coachella Valley's arts in all forms, including visual, music, dance, spoken word, and any creative arts. We will be forwarding a special events permit application soon and will strive to have the evening programs to be integrated into the support and supported by the parks and recreation programming. We see this as a way to enhance the successful programs of parks and recreation. We also hope the tables and benches can be commissioned and be painted by local neighborhood artists. For our nighttime gallery, we envision unveiling these newly painted benches and picnic tables and celebrating them to complement the already existing site-specific works by Gerald Clark and uh, James Garrett Taylor III and bench environments by Benamin Benaim Berti and Travis Davis that were realized through our city's Public Arts Commission. Again, we hope you will include both projects in our in next month's agenda. We believe that uh, these forthcoming projects are great ways to highlight the largest, most utilized park in the city in a neighborhood which has been historically under-resourced and underserved in areas of arts and culture. Thank you for your Thanks. time and consideration. Have a nice evening. Thank you, Edwin. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you. We'll take those into consideration. Thank you. Awesome, too, by the way. Uh, does anyone else uh, want to speak during public comment? I don't see any other hands raised right now. Just give our attendees another second or so. Okay, anyone else for public comment? Okay, I see uh, no other hands raised. Awesome. With that being said, we're going to move on from the public comments portion of this meeting. Thank you, everybody that participated, and we appreciate your comments. At this time, we're going to move forward with the director's report. Ms. Wise, if you have one, we would appreciate it. I do. Thank you. Um, so like all of our meetings, I'll use this portion of the agenda to provide uh, an update on some of our parks and recreation programs, activities and projects that are happening um, around the city. Um, first up, some park maintenance items. Uh, we've already touched a little bit on a couple of these. Um, grass overseeding is in progress at our parks. Uh, we will also have areas of our parks um, where the grass will go dormant due to the current drought and the Desert Water Agency will be supplying us with some really kind of fun and whimsical signage uh, to help explain to the public why some of our grassy areas have gone um, gold. So you can see a couple of those examples on the left side of your screen. 
And we will also, for the third component of our park maintenance, be working on the landscape conversions. And those conversions are the item that is on um, the agenda tonight as another presentation items uh, to talk about converting um, grassy areas into drought tolerant landscaping um, as a permanent measure. For grass overseeding, I just wanted to remind you of where we're at right now with the park overseeding. Um, Cerritos and our Palm Springs Stadium are completed. Uh, we have five parks, Francis Stevens, Downtown Park Victoria, Sunrise and Bristow, which are all underway and in progress right now. And then coming up, uh, Demuth, Desert Highland and Ruth Hardy will get started with each of those dates that I indicated. Uh, and as of course we mentioned the City Hall Dog Park, which was initially uh, initially on our list for overseeding uh, has a schedule change and we will no longer be overseeding the park. So initially it was going to be October 28th through December 12th. So now the park will remain open during that time and we will continue working with our dog park ad hoc on coming up with um, improvements to that facility as well. Shifting gears to talk about some of the activities that are happening at our facilities. Uh, at the Leisure Center, we've got the same great lineup of programming. We're focused on the kids uh, with our after school programs as well as our Pee Wee Rec program. We also are still um, doing our instructor led classes. We have tap dance, we have Aikido and yoga for the community. Over at the Swim Center, uh, the Swim Center is open for a uh, reservation swim in the morning and drop in without uh, a reservation from 11 to three. On Sundays, we actually have the long course for those adventurous uh, swimmers who want to swim uh, the long length of the pool. We also have a uh, partnership for instructor-led water aerobics classes. Uh, and then of course, as you know, um, our swim center is home to uh, swim teams that use our pool to uh, practice. At the last meeting, I mentioned that we were planning on doing a floating pumpkin event. Uh, we actually have deferred that event, so we will not be moving forward with the event at this time. So just update that that one uh, is not moving forward right now. Uh, over at James O. Jesse, um, same great lineup. Um, the workout gym is open. Indoor pickleball remains really popular there. Uh, we've got our drill team and drum squad, as well as adult basketball, and of course, uh, crew happening every second and fourth uh, Friday of the month. Also at JOJ, uh, we are focused on educational programs. So we've got homework help uh, for after school. We have a mature adult program, the youth encouragement program, uh, the knitting and sewing classes, and then our computer lab remains open Monday through Friday from nine to six uh, for those who want to use those resources. Um, some special event activities uh, last, would this be last Friday, Friday before, it must be right now, uh, we had the back to school dance at uh, James O. Jesse, and I believe we had a couple of commissioners in attendance there. Um, coming up, we are doing a really fun Halloween carnival, actually on Halloween, so Monday, October 31st from 4 p.m. to 7. Um, the site will be decorated like a carnival. Over at Demuth, uh, we're still doing a lot of great activities at well, uh, as well, focused on um, just sort of health and wellness. We've had uh, karate, boxing, our fitness classes, our workout gym is open, um, and we also have ping pong and pickleball. Uh, we still have our art classes. Um, for those who are interested, uh, we've got the youth class as well as the adult class. And then new uh, for October, of course, is our archery classes. So we have three different uh, archery classes that we are offering on Wednesdays at Demuth, And those have been, of course, uh, incredibly popular as they were last year as well. Um, and for those you don't need to have your own archery equipment, we do have equipment uh, for those who are interested in trying the sport. Special events um, at Demuth. Uh, we did a family paint party, um, and we also had a community yard sale uh, this past Saturday. Coming up, we are doing a Dia de los Muertos event on Tuesday, November 1st from 5 to 8 p.m., uh, so please put that one on your calendar if you have time to come out. Skate Park has been busy as well. Uh, just yesterday, they did their ninth year anniversary celebration at the Skate Park. Uh, coming up, they have a number of um, activities involving roller skating, uh, bikes, as well as skateboarding events as well. You can see those on the screen. 
Now for some new uh, infrastructure and enhancement projects. At the last meeting, I showed you some of our conceptual renderings of what the new shade structures would look like at the swim center. And I believe I actually maybe accidentally said that there were only two shade structures that we are getting. Uh, and we in fact uh, were able to get three shade structures as part of this project. So these are just some of the photos taken over the last two weeks of the uh, installation taking place. So you can get the play by play, even if you weren't standing there. Uh, and this is on the side uh, towards the leisure center. And then this is looking back towards uh, the swim center sort of check-in area. And then here you see um, the two shade structures on the leisure center and pavilion side. And then the view of those same two uh, shade structures just in the opposite direction. And then the other um, shade structure, which is by um, the children's um, shallow pool uh, on the Ramon Street side. Um, so while we have now the shade structures completed, uh, we will be working with our um, park enhancement ad hoc on working on the seating elements uh, to bring in and put under these shade structures. And that's just another view of uh, the shade structure that is uh, closest to the swim center building. Uh, so far, we're getting a lot of great feedback about those. It was a much needed area for shade, as you all know. Uh, same thing over at uh, James O'Jesse, uh, we have a new shade structure as well. Um, so here are some of the installation shots, and this is uh, adjacent to the ball field. A slightly different style. Um, the swim shade structures are the cantilevered ones. Um, the one at Desert Highland has the four posts. And then uh, same thing on this one, uh, similar to what we'll be doing on the swim center. Oops, let me back up. I think we lost a photo there. On the swim center um, shade structure, we will also be working with our park enhancement ad hoc on uh, working on the seating that goes underneath. Um, and for Desert Highland right now, uh, the plan was to also potentially put concrete under this shade structure. Uh, more on that once our ad hoc has more time uh, to work on those projects. At the, so again, shifting gears, at the last meeting, there was a suggestion that maybe we could help the public uh, stay abreast of all of the things that we're working on by creating a section on our website to list some of those updates. So we have done that. So under the main parks and recreation page, we have a new section right now that's called project updates. It's the top sort of tab right under our department's name that you can see there on the left. And by clicking on that, you'll be able to get sort of updates on the status of different projects that we're working on. So right now on that page, we have um, some of the images from the shade structures that have been installed, as well as some uh, updates for things that are happening uh, at DeMuth as well. And we'll continue to sort of build upon that to just make it easier for the public to access uh, up-to-date information about what we're doing. Hiring, we are still hiring. Um, so we are hiring a program coordinator and we are at the um, stage where we have made an offer. So we're hoping to have a new program coordinator shortly. We are still uh, recruiting for two lifeguards, one full-time and one part-time position. And we are also uh, recruiting for an account clerk too. Uh, the deadline for the account clerk two position is November 1st. So if you know anyone um, who loves budgets, and paying bills and loves Parks and Rec, uh, please send them to the city's website to apply for that opportunity as well. And that completes uh, my update for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Yvonne, awesome update. With that being said, we're gonna move on to the presentation action items. And we got the uh, presentation for parks and landscape conversion. So before, um, before I hand it over to uh, Conserve, and we're gonna actually get Conserve Land here in the meeting as well, if we have not already. Hello, everybody. Okay, Brent, perfect. I'm gonna just uh, quickly remind the commission of where we're at on timeline for the project. And Brent, do you have anyone else with you tonight? 
Um, I was hoping David Navarro, our like senior landscape designer, was going to be joining us. I don't know if you see him out in the waiting room or something like that. I'm not sure if he was able to make it. Okay, I do not, but we will um, be on the lookout. Okay. Um, so for our commissioners, uh, we talked a bit about this, of course, at the last meeting. So we have a citywide initiative to convert some of the grass areas uh, in our parks into drought tolerant landscaping. And that's what tonight's presentation is about. In terms of timeline, the plan is to spend um, several Parks and Rec Commission meetings getting feedback from you, which will help conserve land care and develop those conceptual plans for us. Uh, right now, we're envisioning that that might be September through November, um, with last month being the first meeting that you were able to provide some feedback. Our goal then would be to get an item to City Council in December or January. So that is a timeline of how we're envisioning this rolling out. And again, tonight's uh, presentation is not an action item, uh, but we are requesting um, that you give feedback to uh, Brent with Conserve uh, Land Care to help further develop the concepts for the parks. And then um, Brent, I will advance the slides for you. So you'll just okay. have to let me know when to advance. Okay. All right, so thank you all, everybody on the Parks and Recreation uh, Committee. Um, commissioners, uh, definitely feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions or need further clarification. Um, so I don't know, I believe you guys have been given some of these plans. Uh, obviously, I believe a subcommittee of yours um, met a few weeks ago and provided some initial feedback of types of plants that you are requesting us not uh, include at the various parks. And, um, you know, if you have other feedback regarding either plants or design, definitely feel free to um, reach out to Yvonne or myself or uh, any like Tabitha or anybody like that. So, um, so let's just go ahead and start if you want to uh, advance the slide. So the first park um, is the Baristo Park, and you see all the specs on there. It's a 2.0-acre park uh, with 0.6 acres of turf and 0.2 acres of converting uh, the turf. Go ahead and advance. So there's two different areas uh, at this park. There's the first area that you see on your map located at the south kind of the bottom portion, bottom left portion of the map. Uh, it's uh, totaling 5,161 square feet approximately. Uh, again, a uh, reminder that once we uh, submit these plans, once they get approved through the, um, the council, we'll submit these through DWA and they will give the final like square footage amounts of each of these areas. And so we're pretty we're pretty consistently uh, close, you know, they may up, go up or down uh, in square footage amounts, but it's not a significant amount that we would need to worry about that. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide. So this is the aerial planting plan that um, we have provided for that uh, initial uh, area at the Bristow Park. Um, and some of the feedback that um, I was given is, is, so for most of these, the four parks that we have submitted, we're still working on the Ruth Hardy design uh, currently. So we don't have that one available. Um, so at this Baristo Park, you guys uh, or the subcommittee is requesting us not to provide um, the Dazzlerium Wheelerai. Those are uh, common desert spoon, uh, Bougainvillea La Jolla, the Parkinsonia praecox trees, and then the Mullenbergia regans grass. Um, so I've kind of taken a look at those and um, I can give you guys some suggestions of uh, plant replacements for those. So for the Dazzlerium wheeleri, um, I'm suggesting maybe replacing those with an aloe vera, uh, any type of aloe plant. Uh, for the Bougainvillea La Jolla, uh, I'm suggesting uh, installing some Vitex purpurea. Um, if you know what a Vitex purpurea is, uh, we maintain the Vibe community uh, in Palm Springs, and they have the Vitex purpurea all around their perimeter property 
uh, along with some other different type of plants. Uh, for the Parkinsonia praecox, I'm suggesting um, doing an acacia anura or the silver acacia. Uh, and then for the uh, Molenbergia regans, uh, either with little johns or the Ruselias, uh, those are also known as coral fountains or firecracker plants. So in this design, you can see we've kind of um, done groupings of different the different plants um, scattered in with some of the dazzlariums originally. Um, to break up some of these groupings and we've provided uh, additional trees in there to hopefully grow in and fill and provide some shade. Um, and then throughout the area, it's going to be pretty much stabilized desert gold stabilized DG with a kind of a like a dry riverbed look of uh, Copper Canyon four inch minus cobble, which you see all those different pictures down on your screen right now. Um, and then accenting those with some boulders, various sizes from two feet to three feet in size. Any questions at this point from anyone? Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and, oh, I see a hand up. Hey, Brett, it's me, Jerry, the chair. The only thing I would ask is if we can get photos of the new plants you're suggesting. Yes. As well. I would appreciate that, sir. Yeah, I wasn't able to put all those. Uh, we weren't able to revise all these plans. Uh, I was just notified about this early last week. And so um, uh, at this point, I just I'm going to give some suggestions, but definitely we will get some uh, revised pictures of those plant material, what we're suggesting um, for each of these parks. Awesome. Thank you, sir. So the next area at the Baristo Park is going to be over on the next slide. OK, it's over on uh, South Cae Segundo. Uh, and it's, again, taking consideration of the different plants that are uh, shown on the screen, um, minus the plants that you, you are, guys are not wanting us to install there. Um, and after I confer more with David Navarro, he's our uh, senior designer uh, with our company. Um, he may have some other suggestions of different type of plants that would help accent these key areas. But overall, it's the general, the Desert Gold Stabilized DG, uh, which uh, stays more compact. And once you wet it and roll it, um, it doesn't uh, blow away as easily. And it's more almost kind of like a cement when it's actually wet and rolled. Um, uh, so it's a really good type of ground cover, and then we'll accent the, throughout that um, area with the Copper Canyon uh, four inch minus and some boulders. So if there's no other questions, we'll move on to the next one, which is Desert Highland Park. And you can see all diff different specs there, 10 acres, uh, 7.51 acres of turf, 2.15 acres of conversion. So move, there you go. Um, so this is um, a park that um, if you guys have the, the plans in front of you, it's um, it's one of the plans that, or the sheets that has like multiple pages, uh, but you can see um, we're gonna be converting um, a lot of, of turf at this park. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and go to the next slide. So you can see it broken out in phases um, or sections, uh, one through eight. Um, so if you continue to the next slide, which would be screenshot one, you can follow along. Um, you know, if you have printouts or at home on your computer, uh, you can reference back to each of these areas, one through eight. So this first area is uh, squared in the turquoise uh, blue color. Um, and then if you wanna go ahead, so this is a picture you can see down in the bottom right, it's referencing section one, um, and that incorporates this turf area along with the different type of plants and the trees um, and existing trees at the property, at the park. Um, and then for this one, we, are, we do have, um, throughout, I, I guess it's probably on the, one of the next slides. So you guys also gave some feedback on this as far as uh, not wanting the agave americanas, uh, the Cecilpinia galaco smoothies, uh, the Fokira splendens, uh, which is um, the um, 
trying to think of the name of it, the common name, um, Akatio. And then you aren't wanting the desert gold three quarter inch gravel. You're suggesting something smaller and uh, the smallest is uh, three eighths inch pea gravel in that. Um, so go ahead and move forward a slide. Um, maybe one more so we can kind of take a look at the proposed like walking path. Um, okay, so this area, you can see kind of in the center of that plan, that's kind of where we're uh, suggesting um, doing a stabilized gold DG area. And then that walking path that you can kind of see there um, leads throughout the entire park. Um, and it's just kind of a more stabilized, uh, it's gonna be identified, you know, um, delineated from the rest of the landscape area out there, but we're trying to, um, again, do mass groupings of a specific type of plant and providing some colorful plants as well as some shade trees along that walking path area, um, and then some accents of the larger um, cobble with also some stepping stones, like flagstone stepping stones to kind of accent the areas. So we can just kind of scroll through these some. And then you can see the walking path continuing all throughout that uh, stretch along uh, the north side. Okay, go one more. And then you can see it kind of ends up there um, along the northeast portion. And then we come down here to the southern section along the street front. And then just a continuation of the different plants. So, uh, like I said, we're trying to provide some nice colorful plants that um, bloom all season long. I mean, some will kind of more kind of go dormant during the summer months, some will go dormant during the cooler months, uh, but there should be plenty of color throughout the seasons all year round, so. Any questions at this point? I got another one again, Brent. Okay. Just to uh, be aware, I'd like to, on this particular park and the next park we're gonna go over, I really mm -hmm. wanna make sure we can get a, a walking path around the whole perimeter of it. Yep. So we can incorporate it for the communities or around these parks. They really need it and they deserve yep. it and asking for it for years. So I'd really like to appreciate if we can get that in. Okay, perfect. Not a problem. Thanks. All right, so if there's no other questions, we'll move on to the next park, which is Francis Stevens. Again, you see the square footage amounts, uh, the acres, and then what we're converting. So this is, again, it's broken up into various sections. I think this is um, kind of sideways from your plans. So if you want to advance to the next slide. So those are the different type of plants we're suggesting here. Um, again, we're staying consistent with the, um, um, the plant material, but this park in particular, we're moving uh, to a Southwest Brown three quarter inch gravel. A uh, combination of that and the Moh Mojave gold gravel, and then the antique brown boulders instead of the, uh, I think it was on the other ones was the, um, oh, on the previous one, we're using the boulders on site, and then the Baristo Park, we're using Gray Cresta boulders. Uh, so we're trying to, to uh, provide some differentiation on the different parks and not have them all just be copycat um, of one another. So on this park, um, you guys mentioned you didn't want to use the Dazzlerium wheeleri, the Bougainville La Jolla, and the Mullenbergia Regans, and then we can definitely replace all those um, with other type of suitable plants, desert drought tolerant plants. So if you want to move to the next slide. Okay, the highlighted area down there at the uh, bottom of your screen. Go ahead. And, um, so again, the this park in particular, it has these like smaller 
cutouts and sections of where we're going to be removing the turf in between sidewalks and, and buildings and whatnot. Um, so it's going to be a little bit trickier, you know, to make sure we get uh, the irrigation all working properly and just convert it to uh, drought uh, uh, drip irrigation system. Uh, so if you want to move on to the next slide, the highlighted area there shows uh, two different sections. And then the next slide depicts what those two areas are going to be uh, right next to the fountain and then the other uh, corner patch of grass there. Okay, go ahead and go to the next slide. And again, it just follows the same, same theme. I mean, we're providing uh, groupings of plants material uh, from low to high, um, nothing too high that you can't be able to see through it, uh, but we want to provide some nice ground cover to kind of fill the areas um, and then provide some accent, um, you know, plant material that's going to be a little on the high side, like four, three to four foot, maybe five foot max of uh, material. Uh, this, uh, again, is incorporating the two different types of three-quarter inch gravel, the Southwest Brown and the Mojave Gold, instead of the DG. Go ahead and advance the next slide. Then this is uh, kind of near the parking lot. Go ahead and advance. And these are two sections of that parking lot, uh, the parkway along the parking lot area. Um, we're going to be incorporating some, uh, let's see here, what is the, um, yeah, so the, we're not doing any trees, we're using, we're keeping the existing trees in place, um, and then just accenting with plants. Go ahead and advance, then this is right close. Um, to an area that is uh, going to be scalped and overseeded or has been, and then there's some remaining turf that's going to be um, left dormant. And then you can just see the planting plan going through here. Uh, in general, uh, we're just following the same scheme that we have with the previous parks and just doing groupings of plants uh, varying uh, from area to area. Go ahead and advance again. So again, that's the area. And we are gonna be providing some metal edging to separate the existing grass from the desert landscaping. So the, the gravel does not spill over into the grass areas. Obviously there's gonna be, you know, foot traffic. And so some will eventually, you know, get kicked over, but uh, providing the metal edging will help keep the grass out of the uh, desert skate portions. Uh, and keep most of the gravel from getting into the grass areas. All right, the last park that we have uh, plans for is Victoria Park. Um, so um, Chair Chairman Alcorn, was that one of the parks that you wanted to have the walking path or is it Victoria? My apologies, it's James O. Jesse and Victoria are the two parts I'd like okay. to see with the walking paths around them, please. Okay. Perfect. And so some of the comments you guys gave us feedback on this is um, obviously some of the different plants that I've already mentioned that you guys don't want. But then another comment uh, down below here is you uh, are requesting to remove the ficus nitida hedge around the, uh, the north side bordering the school as well as with the mulch. So I just have a quick question. I'm um, not sure who suggested this, but um, do you want us to put anything back in place of the ficus nitida um, or just leave it uh, or put just the stabilized DG in that and like the walking path? Sorry, I'm trying to unmute. So me personally, that was my suggestion. I have a kind of a bad history with ficus and I know how they grow up and take the water and all that. So yep. I was trying to mitigate, you know, foreseeing maintenance and, and more money than the line. Uh -huh. But secondly, I really enjoy as a park, you know, to look across and have the school kids playing and see our park and kind of intertwine everything together with community and 
the school system. Uh-huh. I don't want to block them out if that makes any kind of sense. Yes. Yeah. And I think what our designers mindset was is maybe the opposite. Maybe the park goers don't really want to like see the kids playing on their the school field and vice versa. You know, kids may not want to see. I mean, I know, you know, we have is, issues with homelessness at all the different parks and, you know, just I think that was more of a screening factor is what we okay. were trying to get at. So but de- we definitely can take. Uh, into consideration the walking path all around that uh, the park perimeter as well awesome thing yeah because i think we can come up with another uh, solution for it but not necessarily the, the whole ficus hedge gotcha okay Perfect. so yeah it, let's go ahead and um, proceed through the slides here so again this particular park uh, does involve installing some stabilized gold D, or desert gold stabilized dg and if you're not familiar with like the dg i'm i'm sure you guys are all familiar with the uh, dg um and it's the 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 primary kind of ground cover if you want to call it um throughout whenever we do uh, turf conversion some you know HOAs or parks or whatever um, do a lot of gravel some do a combination of dg and gravel some do a combination of those to hard hardscape uh, elements with the larger cobble. Uh, so for this, again, you can see there uh, that we're uh, proposing doing some Arizona buckskin flagstone to the left side. Uh, that's the four shaded kind of areas, uh, larger flagstone just to kind of create like an entry point um, across the um, desert scape into the exist the grass to remain. Um, and of course, you see up along the north uh, or the top side of this plan where the ficus knitted a hedges, we're going to go, we're going to kind of pull those out and create a meandering uh, trail throughout. Um, you know, it's not going to just be a straight shot trail. Uh, it's going to be meandering in and out of the, the proposed trees and the plants and all that different stuff. So you kind of get this feel of, you know, a natural, um, you know, as the plants mature and grow in, you're going to be kind of walking through um, you know, uh, a nice lush um, planting area. So um, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to be along the west side of the uh, park, which is uh, two and three, sections two and three. And again, we're going to uh, incorporate some of the larger uh, cobble uh, to create more of like a dry riverbed look. Um, and installing several different types of uh, trees. Um, so you guys have suggested not providing the Sosalpina cacalaco uh, smoothie tree. If there's any trees that you guys particularly want at these different parks to replace those with, if you see an existing one at the park or you've seen another one at, at, throughout the city, uh, definitely give that feedback to Yvonne or myself. Uh, and I, we can definitely incorporate those, uh, whatever type of trees you guys want. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this next one is going to be at the southwest corner. And again, um, that entrance area, you can see we're proposing to in the Arizona buckskin flagstone. Those are going to be like the large uh, flagstone pavers to enter from the sidewalk into crossing the desert scape into the grass area. Um, you can see all the EX are existing trees. Um, and then the CCs, that's where the, co- the, the Cecilpinia cacalacos were going to go, and we will provide a replacement tree for those. Um, and then I realized the other one. So if you back up a couple of slides to um, sections one and two, so this area, it was made a comment. Um, of doing some stabilized DG within those areas to allow for on-site parking. I'm not sure who made those suggestions. What was brought up is our master plan in the future. This is one of the only parks we have with no parking at all. Okay. With having a large space, we're either looking towards putting a parking lot in or maybe using that area to get an additional you know, soccer field or something in there, but we're definitely looking for a par- some kind of parking area is number one on the list for this particular park. So, but- in corp- so you're thinking of installing like the stabilized uh, DG without like installing any plant material? 
no, no, no. We wouldn't be, it would, this would be something for the actual master plan because we were looking at, if we were doing anything, it would be a whole, an actual parking lot graded, brought in, done. Gotcha. Done, not on top of it. Because, you know, people parking on top of the DG, I know you can compact it to 98%. People still yep. tear it by driving on it. So yeah. we're not looking at, I'm not, not I'm saying I, we're, we're trying not to incur more costs down the line. We're trying to think future, not just today or tomorrow, as well as this project too. Gotcha. Okay. So that, yeah, definitely we can take into that consideration. So most of this area in this image is going to be, um, let's just see here. I'm trying to look at the plan. My plans are not real clear here. So yeah, we can de definitely take a look at that. I'll sit down with my enhancement designer and just ensure these areas, uh, if if it's exist, if it's going to be proposed, um, it looks like it's being proposed as desert gold stabilized DG for those areas already. So, okay, uh, so let's go ahead and go back to our. Uh, yeah, I think that was the area. So, again, just continuing where we've created some natural like flagstone entrance points uh, from the sidewalk into the grass area with the Arizona buckskin flagstone uh, pieces. And then in this particular area, uh, we were proposing doing the, the grasses, but I think it would look nice either with some little johns um, or even some maybe exoras. Um, or other mass, like small groupings of plants, uh, just to kind of accent that and highlight that as a, as a point of entry to the grass area. So next is the southeast corner. And again, this is kind of just a wide open space. Um, and let me see, let me pull this up in my map here. Um, so what was being proposed, you can kind of see there, uh, towards the north kind of half of the property would be a pathway, um, which is five feet wide, um, accented with, um, the antique rubble. Um, but like you were suggesting, we could try to create more of a stabilized DG walking path throughout, um, you know, to connect all the different points of the grass areas and to connect also to the sidewalk areas around the perimeter. And you that would be wonderful. The only other thing I have for suggestion for area six would be okay. right coming off the sidewalk right there is a main entrance point from a lot of the neighborhoods. Okay. So we can do a path from the sidewalk right to the walking path. So that way they don't cut their own in, just cutting across the landscape, yep. if that makes any sense. Yep. I would appreciate that. Definitely. Okay. Um, and I know you guys mentioned that not to uh, include the golden barrels and that is a, a, is a good point uh, because not only are they pokey and dangerous, uh, you know, from people walking in there, but they also are one of the heavier theft items as far as plant material because you can just go uh, pop them out of the ground with the shovel and just be gone. <laughs> so. Um, so let's go back up to sec area seven of this, which is continuing along the east side of the park. Again, just uh, continuing with the, the different type of plant material in like more spread out. And it's not as uh, tightly grouped in these areas just because there's such a wider expanse. Uh, but you can see the metal edging again, separating the, the turf conversion area or, or the drought desert scape landscaping from the existing grass. Um, and then continuing up, um, and it was suggested about creating, uh, an extra like three to four foot, maybe five foot, um, area between where we're going to remove the turf, uh, to the existing kind of the soccer field area, just to allow some, um, you know, onlookers and, you know, uh, guests to be able to sit in the grass area and not have to sit in the, like the DG area. <clears throat> So we've taken that into consideration. Um, and then, yeah, just continuing up that north or the east side and then wrapping around towards the north side, uh, the same kind of feel and concept. You know, we created this pathway that connects kind of the, 
north kind of portion of the like the soccer field down to the south portion of the soccer field and then going up to sections 10 and 11 um, that's bordering the school and we will definitely uh, remove all those ficus and create more of a natural uh, walking path feel uh, in and throughout the desert landscaping. I know it's a it's a bunch of information um, and uh, you may have some additional questions now or you may come up with questions so feel free I mean if you want to ask any further questions after this meeting to Yvonne or if Yvonne wants to share my email um, or my cell phone number uh, I'd be more than welcome to um, talk with you on the phone or even meet a couple of you out at a particular park to further discuss. Uh, we definitely want to install a landscaping that um, you guys can be proud of and that you're happy with and that uh, represents the city of Palm Springs overall. Um, so we definitely want to do our part in uh, continuing the conversation with you. And uh, like I said, meeting on site, um, I would be more than happy to do that. Thank you, Brent, for the awesome presentation. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Brent? I just got to say thank you very much for taking all our considerations in the, in the play, and I look forward to working with you guys on this. This is going to be a really cool advancement for our city, so thank you very much. Yep. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. With that being said, I'm going to say thank you, Brent. We're going to move on to okay. our, uh, our next section. I really do thank you, sir. That was awesome. So with that being said, we're going to move on to Commissioner Ad Hoc updates. Um, I know us as having the, uh, well, there we go. Let's, let's start with number one. Let's start with the dog park. Is there any ad hoc updates for the dog park? See John's hand up. Yes, sir. Um, I want to thank Yvonne for meeting with the members of the community last Wednesday. Um, the dog park community is a vocal and engaged community and it was, it was great for her to get out there in front of them. The people were, I would say, respectful. Um, they definitely listened to her, which I appreciated. Um, she did a great job of keeping people on point. We were really only there to talk about one thing and that was the reseeding. I think everybody got ultimately what they wanted or at least a compromise, if you will. So I'm really looking forward to moving forward with the dog parks and keeping our community engaged. Thank you, John. Any other updates on the dog park other than that? All right, thank you, John, Johnny. We're gonna move on to the landscape conversion. Michael, do you wanna take off on this or do you want me to go on this one, sir? I don't know if he's busy or not. So I, I don't know if Michael's busy, so I'll give a quick update. I'm here, but I'm gonna to defer to you because I'm gonna do a presentation on pickleball. So if you don't mind. Yes, sir, no problem. So Michael and I had the privilege of sitting with uh, Yvonne and I forgot her name. She, um, Tabitha Teresa, Richards. Tabitha, see. Mm -hmm. her, her, the new assistant for Teresa. And we went over the landscape conversion. As you guys heard, we had a couple suggestions. And our biggest thing was we're trying not to put spiky, you know, plants in or anything in a park that somebody can get hurt with, you know, God forbid. We're also trying to uh, defer maintenance. We're not trying to put plants in there because even though we're taking out turf, we're putting plants in, it's going to cost more to maintain plants than it would turf, believe it or not, because that way you just hop on a machine, you drive around, you mow it, and you're done. The actual plants takes more physical labor. So we're trying to cut down on plant waste, ones that are really deciduous, make a lot of, uh, of waste. We're trying to you know eliminate those as well. Um, different parts are, we're trying to get walking paths in since we're doing the conversion. Let's go ahead and do the walking paths. These different communities have been asking for, and, um, 
I think the landscape conversion yesterday is moving along really well. And I look forward to seeing what we can do with Ruth Hardy as well. Um, at this time, that's all I have for the landscape conversion, other than you hear the presentation we had from Conserve. They heard what we, we asked for and they're working on it. And look forward to seeing what they come back with with our next meeting. So that's all we have for the landscape conversion right now. On to the next one um, is the master plan. Yvonne, do you have anything on that? We have not met or started on this yet, but we, this is in our sites and going to be going into the, uh, we're going to start working on this here shortly. Yeah, that's correct. So we've not uh, scheduled that ad hoc yet, but we will get that scheduled before the next uh, Parks and Rec Commission meeting. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, park enhancements. Same thing on that one. The park enhancement ad hoc has not met yet either. Awesome. Um, and the last one, it looks like pickleball. So Mr. Finland, I heard you have uh, something to say on pickleball, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you for uh, doing the presentation on landscape conversion. Um, I had a crazy day. So I'm just, I wrote down some of my thoughts that I'd like to share for the group. Um, and I may be uh, recapitulating things that were shared at a previous meeting, but um, the pickleball financial forecast has been set for 2023 and 2024. And the pickleball uh, ad hoc committee will work with Parks and Recreation to establish the protocols needed for court expansion at Demuth. Um, we have signs that are on order for reworked wording on our new forthcoming signage. Um, while engaging in a thoughtful process, the ad hoc uh, committee members formulated wording that was apropos for advisement purposes for those who are coming to the park um, to play pickleball. In whiteboard conversions, we added uh, reconfigurations in the squares to maximize court facilitation. We added the words, and this was um, Yvonne's suggestion, just for folks to be considerate as a general reminder to, to maintaining court protocol. We've installed new acrylic boxes, but we are awaiting the uh, actual arrival of our new signs. Um, and to reiterate, we have money allocated um, for fiscal year 23 uh, to begin the design development process for the pickleball courts. Um, the funding for that is half Measure J and half Quincy. We also have 1,150,000 um, also measure, measure J and Quincy funding for construction projected for fiscal year 2024. So I'm recapping some of these things, points that have been raised previously, but it's well worth mentioning because I just want people to know that um, Parks and Re Recreation Commission and the Ad Hoc Committee for Pickleball working very assiduously on this project and that things are moving forward um, in that regard uh, pertaining to pickleball. Um, the ad hoc committee is also designing a, uh, a timeline to put all of this together as we look toward 2023, 2024. We're going to maximize the available space at Demuth with the goal in mind ultimately of putting Palm Springs pickleball really on the map. Um, I said this also before, and I'll repeat it again. Uh, Yvonne, just come on board as our director at the start of the summer, but we've made great strides as a Parks and Recreation Commission, but also as a pickleball entity in expanding our program in the city of Palm Springs um, with regards to pickleball. And uh, other items that we discussed at uh, ad hoc had to do with um, concerns over uh, safety issues um, for court protocol etc things of that nature essentially that is what i wanted to share with you this evening if there's something that i may have overlooked i apologize and i will defer to yvonne if she wants to add anything to the report that i just submitted awesome great report i just want to reiterate on this what mr finland just said just so our all the, everybody hears and understands this 23 we're looking at design phase and we're not looking to start construction until 24. So I know the new season is coming back. The pickleball courts are already filled. I'm well aware of it. You guys are at the end of my business. I see you every day. But we're looking to start design phase this next fiscal year. 
and 2024, we're looking to start construction. So bear with us. You are on our minds. And thank you for the report, Michael. You're welcome, Commissioner. With that being said, if there's no other ad hoc committees or any uh, um, reports, I'm going to move this meeting on to... Is there any uh, last, I know we got a dormant coming up. Is there anybody, any commissioners have any last questions, comments, anything going on with the, uh, my commissioners? If not, Chair, I know I, oh, go ahead, please. Whoever was, who was going for it. Chair Alcorn, if I just may, I apologize. Um, I joined the meeting in progress um, at 5.40 PM. So just as an aside, if the minutes could reflect that, that I, was in attendance, but I joined the meeting in progress and I apologize. <laughs> we have that noted. Okay. No problem. I got to say three things very quick on a side note. Number one, our Demuth Community Center is crushing it. How the new, our community center director has come in. They have great programs. We have the facility open. It is growing. That is great to see that facility back up and alive. I remember as a kid back in 1980 going to that facility. So it's great seeing that, that facility really up and alive. Um, number two, we are no longer in summer. We're now in our winter time per se. Can we get, or can we have the volleyball nets installed at Ruth Hardy Park and at Victoria Park? Um, I had, unfortunately I had to take my kids over to Cathedral City to go play volleyball. Um, there was no nets at either any of our three areas. And also, can we have, um, I should have talked to our landscaper, at Victoria Park, all the trees we planted during Arbor Day look dead to me. I met Ruth Hardy, they all look alive and very healthy and well, doing well, but all the ones at Victoria Park just seem to be kindling right now. So with that being said, other than that, I'm just going to say thank you to the commission. You guys are doing an awesome job. And uh, just everybody, we really are doing a great job here. Is there anybody else that has anything to say? I'm sorry to take off this meeting. I don't want to a little pedestal here, but just want to get everything out. One thing, Jerry. Yes, sir. I hear Johnny. Johnny just real quick. I want to give a shout out to Janice and her team, not only at the Palm Springs Demuth Community Center, but the infields and all the diamonds at Demuth Park. They're doing a hell of a job. The infields are fabulous. I'm still not 100% happy with conserve and the way they did the way I, the way the outfields look, but they're getting better. The fact that they're being scalped and reseeded is going to help a lot. But just the fact what they're doing to those infields and constantly giving them some love, I'm telling you, it people see it. We play on them. It's amazing. It's amazing what a little love will do. And um, so a shout out to the whole team, Yvonne. Great job. Janice is killing it over there, helping us out all the time. My guys are happy on my Thursday night league. Our, our senior leagues are starting up. So those fields, the infields are really, really nice and uh, good job. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything before we uh, go to adjournment? All right, with that being said, can I get a motion to close this meeting? It was an enjoyable meeting with everybody. I'd like to get a, let's get on to dinner. Motion. Thank you, Michael. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you, John. So with that being said, we are going to stop the 2022, October 24th, Parks and Recreation meeting at 645 with motion to close. Let's do it. My motion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody. That's it with our meeting. All right. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thank Take you, care. everyone. Good Have a good safe Halloween. Let Gary. Thank you, Yvonne, as always. Awesome thank job. You. Yes, ma'am.